It's right here. Sorry for the wait there. We're now joined by UFC middleweight Brandon Allen. Our first question goes to Mike Heck. Mike, you have been unmuted. Brandon, how's it going? How's it going? Good, man. How you doing? Doing good. Uh, you sort of alluded to you had a little, a little like pre-interview interview talk with one of the UFC staff members. It's been a an interesting several weeks for you, having fights being offered to you. Then you weren't able to take them. Then you get offered a top fifteen guy, and and now you get a, a UFC newcomer. What have these last several a couple of weeks been like for you, getting the news that that Ian was out, and now you're facing an undefeated prospect in Kyle Dacus? I was pretty frustrated at first, just based on the fact that I really wanted that fight with ian just personally and then I, I wanted that spot more than anything i wanted that top 15. still my goal this year is to crack top 15 but uh now it's gonna have to be later in the year as long as everything goes well but with all that aside i've got a new opponent i know he's going to be hungry i know he's going to be looking to come show something but uh and he probably would but the downfall is he has to fight me so he's not it's not going to happen is Kyle someone that's that, that you've been paying attention to that's been on your radar? I mean, you guys came up in, in different parts of the region uh, on different scenes. You got to the UFC, obviously, before he did. But is Kyle somebody that's that's been on your radar at all? No, he hasn't been on my radar. He wasn't. I never even heard of the kid until, like, when I was in LFA, I never heard of him or I would ask to, you know, figure out a way to fight him. I didn't really hear about him. Other than that, through friends, like when I started making friends that were from like that area, Philly and New York and somewhere around those those areas, you know, where he's from, you know, making friends with them, seeing people tag them in post and stuff and seeing him and when he fought on contenders. That's when I started seeing him. But no, he was never really on my radar. When it comes to the matchup now, obviously losing the Heinish fight was big for you because you wanted to be a top 15 guy, but it still puts you in a position where... You know, you're 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 being a company guy. You're you're fighting the next man up, and you have to go in there and, and do what you have to do. So, do you still feel like this is an opportunity, even though it's not against a top fifteen guy, to at least showcase yourself in a way to to be memorable and and, and be able to get a Heinish fight or a top fifteen fight after this? Yeah, of course. At the end of the day, it's it's all about myself. For me, it's being the best I can be, getting better every fight, showing more every fight. That's all it's about. I don't really care who's across from me. I'm going to treat them like the best in the world. I'm going to treat, just for instance, Kyle, I'm going to treat him like he's a champion. I'm going to treat him and act like he's better than what he's even capable of being. I, I need to overemphasize the fact that he is really good. You know, I, I have to stay on my P's and Q's. I know when I can change things up a little bit. I know when I can go for it, when I can act up a little bit. But uh, definitely at the beginning, it's definitely P's and Q's, doing what I do and trying to knock his block off. And last thing for me, your team, your coaching staff, been very, very busy over these last couple of months. Bala Muhammad gets a great win last week over a really tough guy in Lyman Good. How much did that fire you up seeing Bilal have the performance he had? And not only that, but just seeing how much he continues to evolve as you get ready to fight on Saturday. Yeah, I love that guy. Bilal's a great guy, a great, great person, great fighter. I have nothing but great things to say about him as well. He's one of the toughest people you're ever going to find. And I think you, everyone sees that in his fights. There's no quitting that guy. It was great to go out there. Are great to watch him go out there and get the W, and against a, a tough veteran like Lyman, that was uh, it was great for him, great for his momentum, and it was a great performance too. Yeah, he got caught, but other than that, he looked great. He looked phenomenal. I was super happy for him. Good seeing you, man. All the Thanks, best on Saturday. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Our next question is from Danny Segura with NMA Junkie. Brendan, um, you're on a crazy win streak, and obviously we, you had this opponent switch. It is does do you have almost like uh, have to put in extra consideration when when things like this happen and, and taking an opponent and possibly you know risking uh, the win streak? Obviously, keeping in mind that it's a it's a fairly short notice. I mean, every time I sign the contract, it's you know it's presenting an opportunity for someone to beat me. I know what I sign up for, whether it be injuries, a loss, or anything like that. It doesn't mean nothing. He's still, like I said, he's still a guy that's going to come out here. He's going to try to prove something. He's trying to be the best or prove that he he's belongs here. But he's not going to do that against me. I'm I'm here for a reason. There's levels to this game, and that's what I'm going to show. That anything other than a top fifteen just does nothing for me. It's not even a competition, and that's what I plan to show. Yeah. And you said you were sort of uh, frustrated with the change. Um, is there any positives you you take from from the change? Any positive? Not really. I mean, it's, it's, I'm just, you know, lucky that I still got a fight, that I got an opponent so I can go in there and 
fight and make some money for my daughter and my wife and uh you know try to try to show something else and uh just be able to get more data you know every fight's more data for us and yeah that's that's really you know i guess the only positive i mean i didn't really take anything away from the change i just i didn't understand how you can say you're injured and then post later that you're going to, to phuket to train like but that's okay he's going to need those extra three months for me and you mentioned he's going to need those extra three months there um th do you want that fight you still is that a fight you still want to pursue yeah 100 percent. yeah and uh and you fought obviously in contender series um now this is going to be obviously the, the the same cage obviously at the ufc apex um is there actual an actual difference um as far as like the the I guess what what it can reflect on the performance having obviously fighting in a smaller cage. I mean, I guess for some people, you know, that they depending on their style. But for me, I do it's really nothing, and you're not going to see me run around and dance and circle hard and all that kind of stuff. I'm not that type of fighter. I'm I'm, I'm there to fight you. I'm there to come to you. I'm there to like I said. I'm, I'm there to knock your block off. I'm there to let you know you're in a fight. I'm there to put impose my will on you and make you break. That's that's my goal every time I fight, and that's what I'm going to do. So the cage size kind of works better for me because it's you know i don't mind being in close and letting hands fly there too it's just most people don't want to stay there with me so i haven't got a chance to show that yet i appreciate the time Brendan. good luck thank you buddy appreciate it our next question is from jay anderson with kate side press thanks very much and uh yeah welcome back brendan it was touched on a little bit ago but this run that you're on has been really impressive uh, from LFA to the Contender Series, the, you know, a couple of wins in the UFC, and then the last one becoming the first man to stop Tom Barisi. Um, what's been the key to success for you in this run? Just confidence in myself. I I found myself. I found what works for me. I figured out the you know the rehydration, the the work that needs to be put in. I've during camp. I I've just figured myself out. I've I know where my head needs to be. I know. You know, I've always been motivated from my brother's situation to my niece, and now I got my daughter, and that's just growing motivation for sure. But uh, mostly I just know where my head needs to be. I know where I need to be fight night. I know how I need to feel, and I know how to overcome. And I've been really, really good at putting myself in very, very uncomfortable situations and being comfortable there in training. So I guess that's another big thing. So confidence and just being comfortable in very uncomfortable situations. You know, you, you talk about the uh, the confidence, but in terms of the uh, mental roller coaster ride that you've been on with opponents coming and going leading into this, have you ever experienced anything like that in your career prior to this? I've never had opponents back out until I got into the UFC. So that's pretty weird to me. I, I never had opponents back i've had p opponents say no to the fight but once contracts are signed or we've had verbal agreements there's never been anything for me and the lfa local promotions nothing like that uh my first fight eric spicely pulled out and i got kevin holland and then ian just pulled out and obviously i got kyle Dawkins. so it's it's different but i'm in the ufc you know all these guys are tough i treat them all like they're the best and uh Again, it's just being the best me that I can be, and uh, I feel like I'm the best in the world, and I just got to manifest that. And, you know, the more that I believe in that, the better that I'll do. I know you said you do want the Heinz fight back if you can get it. What is it about that particular matchup? Because I, I know that fight was talked about e even before we really uh, heard about it. I've been trying to fight him since he got signed to the LFA. I, got, I still think I have the messages to where I asked to fight him when he got signed. Um, and they told me no. They said he was a wrestler and he would just try to take me down and hold me. And I told them that it didn't matter. I'd still tap him if it happened. But uh, they told me no and it never happened. And then he got a lot of hype, still has a lot of hype for whatever the case may be. They blow him up off of him being like a formal drug dealer or whatever and all this crap. But, I mean, I don't know. It's not my thing. I mean, it's like, to me, it's like you put yourself in that situation. So how is it a comeback? I don't know. It's, it's uh, self-inflicted trauma per se it was self-inflicted so i don't really agree with any of that so i don't like that and then things that i've heard or seen about him in the gym and like personally i, I don't really care for so i don't really care for him as a person either from what i what i know or have seen all right well fair enough i'm uh, looking forward to this weekend best of luck and then hopefully you can move on and get the next one 
Thank you. That's all we have for you today, Brandon. Thank you.